Hey, it's Kendrick with Technology Interpreters, and I'd like to welcome you to part two of the Sentinel-1 Endpoint Detection and Response course. So today we're gonna to be going through the dashboard. I'm gonna walk through, I'm gonna take the time, show you what they look like, and explain what these different values and metrics mean. And as we progress through the class, we'll eventually get to deploying and performing scans and performing remediation, and also perform incident response. So be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can keep up with the series. So that's enough of that for now. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're looking at is we've got these menus. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. And so the course is going to walk through from top to bottom, pretty much all of the different aspects of Sentinel one. So at the end of this, if you follow along, you will understand how to use the product. Okay. So let's start here. So we got these menus and all these menus are customizable. It looks like you can just kind of drag them and swap them like that. So that's good. But it's very important to kind of set your dashboard up with information that's relevant. Now, what they've done here is they provided you with a set of information that they say most people reasonably would be interested in. But we can customize this. We can look at any, well, not any, but many aspects of it. So let's let's talk a little bit about this, this top menu where it says scope, okay? And then part one of the series, I talked about how Sentinel One is set up so that we can support multiple companies, right? And so you global is like the person who owns the main console, which a lot of times is a bigger company who has a relationship directly with Sentinel One. Account, that is my account or whatever company's account. And then under our account, we have all of our customer sites, right? And then in each of those sites, they have group. So what this first menu pertains to is basically showing you that you can hey, have this widget so you, like if I wanted to see overall what's happening, if I have a thousand companies and I wanted to see the current scope or the highest level, which would be the top level of, of my permissions that I have, I could actually see that by clicking highest level or I could choose a specific scope and then it allows me to select one of the sites up under, remember the hierarchy, okay? So I could actually report, so if I have a specific customer that I wanna see something very detailed about every time I logged in, I could actually see that specific customers or set up many widgets for many other different customers. But once again, if you have a lot of them, at some point it gets a little bit out of control. So that's also, so let's go ahead and look here. And by the way, you can see the second one, we're gonna talk about threats. So now that we understand the hierarchy, we're gonna look at the threats. And so what we basically we can see is analysis verdict is essentially like we did the analysis of the, analysis of the malware we determined that it was a false positive or that it was an actual threat that was malicious and stuff like that. And so see if we can show you some of the analysis verdicts here. So I don't have any because, well, we should have some, we should have some threats. So but let's see what my scope is set up because that has lots. Okay. So specific scope. So what if I say highest level, right? And I put analysis verdict. I still don't get anything. So let's drill into this a little bit. Let's see where we may have some detections. Uh, Let's look at one of the mentees. No, no, none there. Okay, all right, so nothing on that menu. So let's go ahead and let's try something else at this point. So we go back to the dashboard. We chose the highest level. Very curious that we, oh, you know, maybe we didn't uh, select or even choose a verdict, but I'm pretty sure we did on some of the malware. Confidence level, that's basically how, how much confidence we believe that this actually was malware. The engines, which is, I told you, don't, like in part one, those are like the AI engines, right? So you have the ability to detect static files. You have to like to detect processes and stuff like that. I kind of went through that a little bit in part one. I'm going to go through it in detail when we get into the, to the Sentinels part of the console. Okay. So we can look at the engines. We can look at external ticket exists. Let's see what that looks like in the console. So no external tickets. Okay. Uh, this, these are ones I've never used right here. External tickets. That's a new one. Failed action. That's like, if you try to kill quarantine or something like that malware, and it doesn't work, you'll get a failed action. Like I tried to quarantine it, but maybe the computer was shut off or something like that. So the action will fail. Uh, incident status, this is whether it's already resolved or anything like that. So that's resolved uh, or unresolved typically for incident status. Uh, what else we have here? Indicator, I guess these are indicator compromise. You can kind of customize your title. You can choose a refresh and we'll see how it refreshes. And then also choose your pie chart. So we'll get a little bit into customizing that. Uh, initiator. Let's see, I'm curious about that one. So I would like to see some of these uh, because we're at the top level. Maybe we have to drill down a little bit to see some of this data. I'm curious that I'm getting no data out of any, any of the, uh, either my consoles or the mentees consoles, because I know we've had some detections uh, on some of these. Okay, so we're, we're getting nothing. So high scope available. 
still get a no detection and maybe it's based on the time period so dashboard last saved so i don't see where we can choose the time period to be honest let's look at our our chart here and once again we don't have the option to choose a particular time interval so maybe that's hard coded we'll figure that out uh mitigate it preemptively um not necessarily sure i see that one and note exists let's see i think we put some notes on some stuff so honestly it's interesting that none of this is showing so now that we've got this let's also look at the different types of graphs so we do have some data right here threats by detection engine so we can click edit here it's so under the threats so they chose a the horizontal bar what if we try to represent that in the pie chart that doesn't necessarily represent well in the pie chart let's see if we can do a donut no representation well you see donuts actually right there that's a donut graph right there so donut and pie chart the difference is a lot of times i had to learn this because the donut is going to have a hole in the middle <laughs> like a real donut and it doesn't necessarily represent a hundred percent if you add up all the pieces so for this one let's see if we can change this one from this is going to be a donut can we change that to a bar no so to me and see this la that's the last three months last three months okay i missed that this is not necessarily see a time period but just for the last three months all right so it also depends as you can see different types of graphs actually oh word cloud now that would be cool I don't know if you've seen Word Cloud, where it kind of like puts the, these words in hierarchy and stuff like that. Horizontal bar, let's see. And so it's interesting. So we had data. Now we don't have data. Let's go. It says, okay, there it is on top level. So you can see I can represent this data here. But if I can, can I do a Word Cloud? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, no Word Cloud. Stack bar. Will that actually work? Okay, cool. So that's what a stack bar looks like. All right, let's take a look at here. Go through. If we just do a bar graph, does that work? Okay, you can kind of see. So we got Sentinel One Cloud, and we got Static, the one right Static AI Suspicious. And let's see what else. So what are we representing here? This this is giving you a good indicator. These are threats. So these are the engines, basic. So this is cool. This is what I wanted to see. So you can see the different type of engines on right Static, Behavior AI documents scripts uh anti-exploitation fileless malware uh intrusion detection so this is a great way and i'll show you some other ways to be able to look at some of the data in the console and then here like this one's a little bit more interesting so right here you can actually uh let's see threat landscape i haven't played with that one so it's the same thing okay cool so basically it's the malicious category and they're using free text uh but we can also switch that to live feed but see we're already using the live feed right here so we wouldn't want to have two live feeds. So they've got miscellaneous live feed here. And so when you get the live feed, it essentially is a, a link to a blog post. Now, what I'm curious is about this live feed, it'd be nice if we could somehow tie this in to some other thread feed that we have. But you can see that these categories are pretty much the same. Now, the thing is, I went through a lot of the, the threat, but let's go through, let's talk a little bit about the Ranger. And remember, Ranger is a product that is basically, it detects other computers on your network to determine if they have Sentinel-1 installed. You already know about the hierarchy, so you can kind of see the diff like the different things you can break down. So discovery method, endpoint ranger status, endpoint ranger versions. That's good to know if you're going to need to do some upgrades or something like that. Known fingerprinting data, managed states, uh, OS types. Managed states is going to be essentially managed or unmanaged. And of course, OS type, operating system types. And then rogues, of course, we can see, let's see, what can we see about rogues? We can see operating system types on the rows right there so that's our option there uh we have some rows in the console oh see we can see so for our rows right there we got linux windows apple windows legacy let's look at some of these other categories while i'm at it so uh let's see if we go to ranger if i go to os type am i going to see the same thing okay cool and then if i see ranger i can go to discovery method let's see what if it shows me that so it's neighbor port scan. So you can kind of, this, this gives you a sense of all the different things that Ranger is actually doing to detect stuff on your network. And it looks like that one got cut off just a little bit. I don't know if I can resize these. I can resize these. Okay, cool. So we can actually, I need to make this a little bit smaller and we can make that a little bit bigger. So, all right, so you can see this, this is a good indicator. So once again, this is kind of helping you to kind of reverse engineer the product. So we can see that it's using uh, neighbor, I guess it's the, using, I don't know if that's using LLDP or some type of technology to detect this neighbor, or just basically reading what's coming across like that in the ARP request, 
on local subnet potentially you got pings md at mdns i'm not familiar with mdns i'm curious about that mdns that is uh multicast oh multicast dns traffic okay that makes sense all right cool and then ssdp uh man i forgot what SSD <laughs> ssdp stands for let's see simple service discovery protocol used by universal plug and play okay cool that's good to know all right port scans agents if they have an actual agent on it smb snmp smb which is file share snmp simple network management Pro protocol something that's a lot of times on network equipment dhcp requests and dns so that gives us the behind the scene of how the ranger actually uh functions let's see ranger status let's look at that enabled not enabled or disabled okay so that lets us know if the agents were basically our ranger agents that detect stuff are working all right and we can see the actual agent versions here right so that's good to know if you want to kind of track those from a higher level and let's see what else known fingerprinting data i'm curious what, curious what this is okay so fingerprinting data we can use mac OS. so basically it's like i don't know almost demographic so mac addresses os version manufacturer and host name are some of the metrics that we're using to determine some of the rogues and then managed states that should be managed or unmanaged okay unsupported secured unsecured unknown okay there are statuses there and then let's go here and then os types once again that was pretty straightforward so that goes through the ranger category let's look at the rogues what do we want to know about these rogues well we saw os types let's look at applications ah risk level this is good so i like this i'm excited about this one so we can see criticals the number of criticals, highs, lows, mediums, and false positives right there. So that's a good graph. You may want to have that at the top of your console. And then on top of that, we have what miscellaneous and oh, you can choose the font color. That's nice. So if something shows of miscellaneous, can, can well, let me see, did I miss that? Can we do that on all of them? No, it looks like just the miscellaneous allows you to check the font, change the font color. Okay, cool and um let's see did i miss anything all right we can click here we can add a widget okay and once again these are the same categories we can delete widgets let's look over here we can store it to the default we can upload what can we upload hey there are my pictures from my last video behind the scenes right there i don't know what we can upload interesting so you can clear a dashboard maybe you can save a dashboard i can download okay so if i download yeah it downloads a json file okay cool all right well i think that covers it uh we, we basically have the dashboard here this is only a 12 minute video so if you want to see as we go next what's next on the list all right ranger we talked about it so that's the that's what we talked about We're going to be able to detect what's on our network locally and figure out what we need to secure so don't forget to subscribe i'll see you back part three of sentinel one complete course uh thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe